Welcome back. In the last video, I made this carbon fiber floor. This is a floor panel that'll go underneath the co-pilot seat. And in this video, I am going to make the same panel for the pilot seat with a couple minor changes. So this one obviously has a different feature on the top of the mold, which will be on the bottom of the floor section. And it'll have something else that makes it a little more special. So if you wanna see what that's all about, stick around to the end of the video. And for right now, I'm gonna get started with uh, laying down the carbon fiber stack onto this mold, getting the consumables on it, and getting an infusion going. Here we go. I'll get the gum tape on, and then I can get started. All right, got my 3M Super Spray Tack. done is I've, I've taken the, the three layers I did on that one so that's all the same here and then on this side I've kind of staggered the layers and there's about seven layers here and so I'm going to use this side to mount something and then obviously this is going to be a stowage so this whole area is reinforced the metal tube for the airframe goes about right here so I've got an anchor there I'll have uh, uh, anchor or fasteners right there, and I'll have another one there. And so this will be kind of stiffened up. Um, but anyway, carbon fiber layup is done. I've got to do peel ply, breather material, bag. I need to fix the gum tape, and uh, then I can do an infusion. So here I go. After midnight and all I want to do is pull a vacuum on this so that overnight uh, it kind of pulls all the moisture out of inside the bag and presses everything down firmly so I like to and do a leak check 
I'll pull a vacuum on it tonight, make sure it doesn't leak down uh, tomorrow, get the moisture out of it, and that's all I gotta do. So let me pinch it up and make that happen. Ooh. That is tight. So that's been sitting here all night, um, and I am ready to mix up some resin and get it sucked into this part. Was almost a disaster. I got a little distracted with the uh, the 91 Toyota MR2 Turbo. Right. Did some Nuremberg hot laps a couple years ago. It's uh, set up for racing or going to the grocery store. But this is a different story. So back to the airplane. Um, let's see. I was working on the MR2. And I almost let the resin go dry, which would have sucked air right up into it. Um, I already put more than in the previous floor, but I have the added feature and I've put a lot more layers here to stiffen this panel up. So I uh, quickly mixed a little bit more, degassing it right now. Um, and fortunately, I stopped what I was doing there and took a look at what was going on here. Uh, this is going really well. That is not going really well at the moment. Uh, but let's see, so 325 line. 325 line, I hit that at 320. So even with uh, kind of this issue, I'll still get there because to degas that, I actually pinched that off. So I'm not shooting any resin into it right now. Um, but I'll still hit my finished part in two hours. And then we're starting to approach a break all the way around. But uh, let's see, I'll let that degas and let me get the time lapse going back again. Here we go. That's all done. Let's have a look. I think uh, I think this is one of my better ones. I've got no dry spots, so that filled out quite well. I do have a little bunching up on some of the corners, you know. So bringing it tight with the glue didn't totally fix that, uh, but that thing's fully wetted out. So I think by now we all know the drill: 24 hours of cure time here under a vacuum. And then uh, when that's done, I'll show you guys my oven and we'll put it in there for eight hours at about 180, 190 degrees. That's pretty much cured. Bam. Let's get this guy out of here. this guy in the oven. Whoa. It's probably a little hard to see. Let's see. I have my uh, heat treat oven going and I don't know, one of the parts broke on it, so I'll have to figure out what's wrong with that. Um, but I'm just gonna rely on my little space heater here. And uh, let's see, that oven would have gotten this up to 180, no problem. But something always goes wrong. And so that's okay, the small heater will get this up to just about, uh, just above 100, 105, something like that. 
and that should do this just fine. So I will plug that in. And uh, let's see, a quick word on the heat treat cycle. Um, let's see, I was super into cars when I was a kid. I'm still into cars now. And I think the Ferrari F40 was like the first production car to be fully carbon fiber. And there was, a, there was a myth that the paint was so thin to reduce weight, you could see the carbon fiber weave like through the paint. And, uh, but that actually wasn't the case. So what was happening was people that didn't really know what they were doing would do hot laps around the track, right? They would get the car really hot and then they would just park it without like cooling down. And so in areas like above the brakes on the fenders here, the resin within the carbon fiber would kind of start to not really melt, but uh, get soft and gel up. And so what you'd see on areas like this over there, maybe on top of the engine would be these, uh, the actual weave, like printing through the paint. And part of that was, um, I believe the resin technology wasn't quite there yet. You know, as a first production car to be carbon fiber. And then also maybe perhaps the cure cycle. And so, part of me wants to get the cure cycle right so that I don't end up with the same problem. Um, but you know what, these panels that are inside the airplane, it's not like I'm doing a plenum or an engine cowling or anything within the engine bay. So in this case, you know, my oven's broken at the moment, shouldn't be a big deal, but if it were say a plenum or something like that, I would hustle up and go to the hardware store and, and make something work. So. Anyway, I didn't Google any of that. That's just knowledge from when I was a kid. So if I'm wrong, I apologize. Um, but I will tune back in when I'm ready to unwrap this thing in like eight hours. It is now time to take this off the mold and I can tell right away as I was pulling the peel ply off this thing just wants to pop right off of there maybe not <laughs> maybe not uh, let's see how well it comes off and then let's see how well it fits onto the airframe <laughs> just like that one-handed Wow as usual man this is Flawless. All right. Second part of this. <laughs> Man. That was awesome. This one got totally witted out. Looks even better than the last one. That is perfect. Holy cow. It is time to open the Garmin goodies. I figured I might as well share with you why I decided to add uh, seven or eight layers of carbon at this corner and then also why I put this pocket in here. Uh, essentially this floor pan is going to double as the mount for the autopilot servo. And so that's why this area is stiff. I'll be adding a fastener location right here, another one over here, one on the back here, and then one down on the pocket along the, uh, the former, the aluminum former that goes there. And then I, I really wanted these three uh, fastener locations. So then I figured at the same time, I might as well make that pocket useful. 
There you go, added stowage, doubling as a mount for the autopilot servo, and the floor pan fits perfect. All right, guys, so there you have it. Um, this thing turned out exceptional. In the next video, I'm doing the rear floor, and then, uh, then I've got to cut, fit, and put tabs everywhere. Um, and then I'll probably be done with the interior carbon. So see you on the next one.